Why is the geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue always smaller than the algebraic multiplicity? The sum of geometric multiplicities of the eigenvalues of an n by n matrix is at most n, of course. You can have at most n independent eigenvectors in Rn. But why can't we have something like this? Say a 5 by 5 matrix with two eigenvalues with algebraic multiplicities 3 and 2. If the first one would have a geometric multiplicity of 2, then there is still room for three independent eigenvectors for the other eigenvalues. So the other one could have a uh, multiplicity 3. However, this cannot be the case, as we will show. The algebraic multiplicity is always equal to the geometric multiplicity or bigger. And that is nice, since it gives us a false criterion to see whether a matrix is diagonalizable or not. But why is the geometric multiplicity always smaller? We will learn that in this video. Uh, for that, we first need to make a small detour to the paragraph about linear transformations. If you have a transformation from Rn to Rn, you know that this linear transformation can be implemented by matrix B, d of x equals b times x. And how did you make b? How could you find b? Well, you put b equals the t of e1, t of e2, up to t of en. So how does that look in the picture? If you have here your e1, then your t maps it, say, to v1, then your first uh, column of your matrix b should be v1. Uh, inverse goes the other way around. So if your matrix B has its first column v1, then e1 is mapped to v1, and the inverse transformation maps it back to e1. And that's what we are going to use. If you have a matrix which has the first column, say v1, then the image of e1 is v1, and the inverse image of v1 is again e1. That's the result we're going to need. Now, what does this have to do with multiplicities? Let's see. Suppose we have some <coughs> uh, eigenvalue lambda 0, and suppose the geometric multiplicity is k. I have an n by n matrix. That means a times vi equals lambda 0 times vi for i is 1 to k, where the set of eigen factors v1 to vk is independent, because that is what it means that my geometric multiplicity equals k. I have k independent eigenvectors. And then we are going to do a, well, you could call it a nasty trick. I, I, I think it's a nice trick. We find this matrix P as follows. We put as first columns the k eigenvectors. I want to have an n by n matrix P, and I want it to be invertible. So first columns are just the eigenvectors. And for the other ones, well, I don't care. UK plus 1 until UN. Just put some vectors there, but you need to make sure that your P is invertible, which is possible, of course, because uh, it's an n by n matrix. If the first k columns are independent, you just add some columns in order to make the full P independent. And it doesn't matter which columns you add there. So we have an invertible matrix P. And then we compute m equals p inverse times a times p. Why? What does this have to do with eigenvalues? Well, as you see, the matrix m is similar to the matrix a. That means that the eigenvalues of a and of m are the same. And as it turns out, it will be easier to say something about the eigenvalues of m than to say something about the eigenvalues of a. So now we are going to look at the eigenvalues of m. So first, we are going to play around a bit with the matrix m p inverse ap. So m p inverse ap equals p inverse a. Here we have this big p and we put it over here. Then we compute a times this matrix p. We get this new columns a times v1, a times v2 up to a times vk, and a times uk plus 1 up to a times un. Now, what happens over there? We don't care. Just leave it as they are. What happens over here is nice, because v1 until vk are um, uh, uh, 
eigenvectors with uh, eigenvalue lambda, lambda zero, so we get a lambda v1 up to lambda vk over there. So in the first k columns, we can simplify something, and in the, the other ones, we can't. Then we can take in the p inverse. So what happens over there? Again, we don't care. But here, we have p inverse times lambda times v1. And there we need our picture. Because what happens to, what do we get if we compute p inverse times v1? Well, the matrix uh, p contains the v1 up to vk. So we have this situation over here, where e1 is mapped by p to v1. And the inverse transformation, given by p inverse, maps v1 back to e1. So p inverse working on lambda times v1 yields a lambda times e1. For the other ones, the same. So our, our matrix M gets a very nice structure, lambda e1, lambda 0 e2, up to lambda 0 times ek. And here, rubbish. So let's put that explicitly. So here we have our matrix M. First column is lambda 0 times e1, so lambda 0 times 1 and all, all zeros, like this. Second column becomes lambda 0 times e2, so 0, lambda 0, and all zeros. And it goes on till the kth column. And then the other part, the p inverse a times uk plus 1, I, that, that's some, uh, that there are all, all kinds of numbers over there, we don't know, doesn't matter. Call this, this block over here the matrix q1, call this block over here the matrix q2. So here we have our matrix. M, which is nice on the first part. And then we can try to compute the eigenvalues of M. So we compute the determinant of M minus lambda times I n. And the first part over here we can uh, expand immediately because here it's diagonal. So we get a, a lambda 0 minus lambda and lambda 0 minus lambda on this part. We can compute the determinant and we get lambda 0 minus lambda to the power k because of this block and then a determinant of q2 minus lambda times i and minus k. But now we see that this lambda 0 is an eigenvalue of m with algebraic multiplicity k or larger, because I don't know, it might be a 0 of this part as well. So we know that lambda 0 is an eigenvalue of the matrix m with algebraic multiplicity of k or larger. So the Algebraic multiplicity of lambda 0 is at least k of m. But the eigenvalues of m and a are the same. So the algebraic multiplicity of lambda 0 of a is also at least k. Well, the geometric multiplicity is equal to k. That means that the geometric multiplicity is smaller or equal than the algebraic multiplicity because that one is bigger than k.